And I'm going to assume that everyone can see the screen. Um, okay, <laughs> I see some yeses, so um, thank you. Um, all right, so thank you for coming. Um, we are excited to start this academic year. Unfortunately, um, we were hoping for a fall in which we could do some hybrid uh, or in-person events. It seems like we'll have to keep it virtual for now. Um, but uh, my name is Bernard. I'm a fifth year PhD student here at Hopkins uh, and the president of the Johns Hopkins Science Policy Group. Um, there's all our contact info, um, but so if you have any questions, doubts, um, anything that you wanna uh, ask us, feel free to send us an email. Um, so we wanted to start with just some updates on who we are. Um, and so, as I said, I'm, I, I don't know if all of the exec board is here, but I think most of us are. Uh, so I'll let them introduce themselves. But um, as I said, I'm Bernard, I'm the president. Um, and I work in bank credit cancer. Um, so if the exec team wants to just go by one by one and just kind of say who they are and what their role is in the group. I guess I'll go next. Hi, I'm Desmond. I'm the vice president um, and I'm a first year PhD student in BCMB. Hi guys, my name's Edwin. Uh, I'm a second year master's student and I study cutaneous gram cell carcinomas. Uh, it's nice to see everyone and I hope we'll have a great year together. Uh, yeah, hi everyone. I'm Stephen. I'm the treasurer for this year, and uh, I'm a neuroscientist in the Mind Brain Institute studying decision making and uh, sensory integration. All righty. I don't think we have anyone else from the expect team. I think Brandy is going to be a little late, um, but I don't think anyone else is here. If so, they can introduce themselves um, later. Um, but we wanted to then go on and kind of know a little bit about you all. So if you can go to your phones and go to this website, um, we will do just some like a couple of polls so that we know like what you're doing, what do you know about science policy, what your interests are, um, and we will see the results, um, you know, in live. Um, so I will share another screen. Um, so it's menti.com and then this will be the um, code that you have to add. Um, I will now share, so I'll stop sharing. You will be able to see again the number, but I wanna share with you the other, um, the other page so we can see exactly the answers. Um, alrighty, so da, 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 da. Um, all right, so you can have on top again the code if you want to go. If you haven't got any yet, menti.com, and then the code is right on top. Um, All right, so a lot of School of Public Health students, um, I feel like a lot of master students come with a lot of energy, um, so it's always nice. I feel like as a fifth year, I'm destroyed already. Um, so good to know that we have a lot of um, potentially master students and first years that are excited. Um, all right. Um, all right, so if there's no more participants, we'll go to the next question. Um, 
which is going to be about what do you know about science policy um, and whether you agree or do not agree with these statements. All right, a lot of changing. And this will help us, you know, we're, we're trying to know exactly where everyone's understanding or interest in science policy is to kind of provide also um, some workshops or panels that kind of answer or make you more familiar with exactly you know, things that you may not be familiar, right? So like, what do careers in science policy look like, right? I feel like a lot of PhD students or um, master students maybe are not sure. Um, you know, you can do science policy in a lot of different places as well. So, um, you know, the careers may look a little different based on where you work as well. Um, so we're hoping that this fall we can do a few you know, a few panels on what exactly science policy is, what the different careers look like, and, you know, knowing that as, you know, master students or PhD students, we have the skills to actually have a career in policy, if that's what you want to do. Um, then this is kind of open, you know, if there are something that you've always wondered something that you're interested about, something that you're like, I have no idea what this is, or you have a little bit of idea and it seems interesting. Um, you know, this is a little bit more open-ended for you to kind of write what's, you know, what your interests are or um, things that you've started to learn, but you're unsure um, about some aspects or want to know more about. All right. And so we'll see basically this like cloud of like words uh, of what everyone is writing. And if everyone has the same questions or, or things that they want to learn about, um, those are going to be uh, way bigger. Um, all right, find the jumps in the US. Um, aging, honestly, same. Um, all right, lots of skills. Um, all righty, so a lot of careers, types of jobs, and we're hoping to do that, um, you know, in collaboration with um, Future, the office here at Hopkins, to kind of put some panels together on, again, these skills that you may need. Um, how the jobs look like, um, finding jobs in the US, I understand as an international student. Uh, so also, uh, you know, happy to um, do some workshops or seminars that kind of cover all of these, um, the I in STEM, exactly. So this is just gonna be helpful for us to kind of think about the, you know, different workshops that we, we wanna put for all of you so that we're really, um, giving you exactly what kind of you're asking for, you're curious about. And lastly, um, a little bit about your interest. I know this is just seven and there are way more, uh, but um, this is just kind of for you to kind of rank them. Uh, we want to also bring some panelists and speakers that can talk a little bit about um, you know, what they do and, and where they work on these different issues um, so you can learn more about, you know, what it means to do environmental policy right in the U.S. or what it means to do it in a nonprofit or in government. Um, so, um, so, yeah, this is, again, just for us to understand a little bit more about your interests and provide some seminars or um, policy panelists on, on these issues as well. All right. A lot of people with science diplomacy. We have some exciting stuff on science diplomacy, um, hopefully happening soon, um, that we'll touch on it uh, during this meeting. All right.
also a lot of health policy. Um, awesome. Um, Alrighty, so feel free, this is gonna stay open. So feel free to also, if you are still working on it, do so. Um, but we're gonna hope to do this kind of polls or kind of, you know, since we're a lot in the meeting, this is an easy way for you to kind of give us some feedback or things that you would like to see. Again, you can always reach out to us um, if you have questions and you don't wanna do it this way and you just wanna type an email, feel free to do so. Um, all right, so I will, go back to the presentation and kind of talk a little bit about the work that we've done in the past and uh, some of the events that we're hoping to do this year. Um, alrighty. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to interrupt at any minute. Um, alrighty. All right, I'm gonna assume nothing has changed and you can still see this. Um, all right, so these are some of the, so our mission and some of the events that we've done that kind of um, follows our mission. Um, so as we said, as I said before, during the, the different polls, we really want to have some kind of conversation, panelists, seminars, um, that really look at the intersection of science, policy, and civic engagement. Um, a lot of us are trained in a very specific way and we tend to not see more than just the science that we're doing. So it's always nice to start thinking about, uh, you know, some of the things that our science can inform and how can it benefit, um, you know, the public as well as inform um, the policymaking process. So uh, during, uh, you know, when COVID first hit, we did a couple of um, events on kind of communication and how to fight misinformation. And we also did, uh, uh, town hall on prescription drug affordability to kind of, you know, talk about some of these issues. Um, uh, next, um, we also want to kind of engage with representatives uh, and bring them, you know, topics and issues that we care about that maybe we work on. Um, so we've been doing, uh, so in 2019, we did the Baltimore City Hall poster. Uh, I'll talk about it in just a few uh, minutes because we're hoping to do it again in person this year to, you know, in which some people uh, talked about their, uh, their research and the work that they do at Hopkins with uh, local representatives in ways that uh, they think this could inform some of the policies happening in Baltimore. Uh, last year, we did a uh, visit to our Maryland uh, State Assembly, um, just, you know, to kind of, just a first visit, but we're hoping that that can go in the future to a Hill Day in which we can actually go to Maryland State Assembly and advocate for issues that we care about. Uh, we did a seminar with State Senator Bobby Zirkin as well. Um, I believe this was 2019. Uh, we did the Rally for Medical Research. This is a rally that happens uh, every year in which you know advocates, doctors, patients, and researchers go to Capitol Hill and talk to um, congressmen, congresswomen, as well as senators, uh, you know, on the importance of medical research and funding for the NIH and NSF. Um, and last year, we also uh, were collaborating with, with the University of Maryland uh, on kind of creating a science policy fellowship at the Maryland state level. Um, lastly, again, we want to um, highlight career opportunities. We know that many of you maybe do not want to do a career in policy. Some of you do. Um, but we're hoping to do uh, career panels as well, you know, partnering with the professional career, uh, professional development and career office. Uh, we sent an email today uh, regarding options, which is a seminar that is starting tomorrow uh, on science policy and communications to, you know, kind of bring people that are already working in science policy so that you get a gist of, you know, what does it mean to work in a nonprofit? What does it mean to work in government? What does it mean to work, you know, uh, do science diplomacy work? Um, and then there is the National Science Policy Network uh, Symposium. It just happens every year. We talk about NSPN in just a few moments, uh, but it's basically an organization of early career scientists and researchers, postdocs uh, that are interested in science uh, policy. And so it's a, a great organization if you're looking for more opportunities, you're trying to do more professional development, you want to 
you know, have some happy hours to network and you want some funding to attend specific conference on on policies that maybe your pi cannot um you know cannot sponsor you to go um so we encourage everyone to to check um nspn uh, and lastly, we also want to create content that promotes science literacy as well as policy understanding. So we have a blog on our website. We encourage all of you to write on it. You can write op-eds. You can write, uh, you know, any kind of policy memo or policy um, piece there on any issue that is important to you. Uh, we also compete in the National Science Policy Memo Competition that happens um, once every year. And I believe last year or two years ago, we uh, were selected for publication. So it's a competition that happens between the National Science Policy Network and the Journal for Science Policy and Governance. And those selected um, basically get published in a policy journal. Um, and these, again, are some of our uh, partners, as I mentioned before, NSPN, uh, JSPG, um, Research America. Uh, I think we have a question. I think someone raised their hand. So please, I cannot see any of you. I just saw like a little thing that says someone raised their hand. So please feel to unmute you and ask any questions that you may have. Uh, I was just going to ask if we could get a copy of the slides here, just because sure. it's a lot of information. Okay. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. I mean, this is being recorded, and we're we're gonna you know we're gonna upload these to YouTube, and we're gonna send an email um when that is uploaded with the link and we're happy to also you know download the slides and kind of copy them into the email um and and send it to all of you so yes um no no problem <laughs> thank you sorry i was like trying to write everything down i was like i'm behind so no worries i know this is a lot of information i just don't want to be talking for an hour um and so i just kind of go in a little fast um but again please feel free to interrupt me and um if you have questions again um interrupt me. Um, and so some of the previous events that we did, I mentioned a little bit of these, but I want to go through them uh, just to get an idea, for you to get an idea of some of the work that we've been doing. Um, as you can see here, this is the city um, whole poster session. Uh, we did this in person in 2019. 2020 was very odd. Uh, this was supposed to happen in the spring, which is right when COVID hit. So it wasn't great we had to kind of adapt it into a virtual setting which was not ideal uh we're hoping that this year we can do something in the spring in person and again we're we're you know we will open a process uh to select a few you know a few people to go to the city hall uh you know and we the different representatives know about it uh we also try to to advertise it to the public as well so it can be a place where i'm sure that you know, we'll have to figure it out COVID restrictions, but uh, we're hoping that this is a, um, a moment for, you know, for early career scientists to kind of talk about the research. Of course, we want this focused on, on policy implications or, you know, why should they care, right? Why should the public care or why should policymakers care? Uh, but we want to provide these opportunities for you to, to kind of present your, your work outside of just scientific you know, uh, meetings or maybe your colleagues at Hopkins. Um, so we're hoping that these will happen sometime in the spring and, you know, we'll work on figuring out, you know, any kind of restrictions that um, that there may be because of COVID. Um, as I mentioned before, the NSP and GSPT competition, um, this is again a competition that happens every year. Um, you work on, you know, groups on, on a specific policy topic of your interest. Uh, we're hoping to provide, again, some training on how to write policy memos, how to write for, you know, uh, publications that are not per se, like scientific. Um, and even outside of this competition, we encourage, you know, even if your policy memo is not selected, uh, the Journal of Science Policy and Governance has multiple volumes outside of this competition. So you're always welcome to submit uh, a policy analysis, policy memo outside of the competition. Um, and so uh, a potential for 2022 would be to actually, after this competition, kind of organize a Hill Day to the Maryland State Assembly or Capitol Hill to meet with legislators and talk about the issues that you've been working on uh, for this competition. Um, we also did some uh, policy um, and communication workshops with Project Bridge to kind of, again, talk about how to communicate science outside 
of you know our kind of scientific bubble and how to communicate with different audiences that maybe are not familiar with your research or are not familiar with you know science at all uh so we're hoping to also do this um with project bridge still unclear whether this is going to happen virtually or in person um but we're hoping to do this collaboration again with project bridge and do these workshops again um potentially right before the policy memo competition so you can get some of these skills uh and then work on on different you know policy stuff um and lastly we did um uh 2020 uh voting initiative um right before uh right before the election uh again 2022 is another election year so we may still um do something relating to to you know encouraging um the stem vote uh and so we did uh a series of uh seminars as you can see refugees international um talked about it and and um put our work in the website. Uh, we did a few um, writing um, to kind of get the Hopkins community engaged. Uh, and we also participated in the Science Debate Initiative in which we basically created a questionnaire with uh, different science questions that we then sent to all of the different um, you know, campaigns for the different um, you know, um, politicians that were running for office, for any kind of office or so local uh, House of Representatives, as well as Senate, uh, so that they could talk about, you know, their stance on different science topics and that people would be able to make uh, an important decision based on, on, you know, where each candidate stance was on science. Um, and so again, 2022, is another you know midterm selection, so we may be doing something related to to you know science and why it's important for scientists to vote and be engaged in um, politics. And again, as I mentioned, uh, our blog. If you're interested, um, we are always looking for for people's um, submissions and anything that you want to write about. Uh, some upcoming events, and I think. Um, Desmond is going to talk next about the PDCO Science Policy and Communication Seminars. But these are some of the things that we're working on. Um, again, I, I think we emailed about it yesterday, but we'll repeat it again today um, on these um, seminars that are happening, uh, sponsored by the Professional Development and Career Office. We are hoping to have some science diplomacy seminars uh, co-hosted with the uh, Science Policy Group at UPenn. Uh, and then some other, you know, career panels on what it means to do uh, science policy as a career, and as well as some seminars on some of the interests that you've um, mentioned today. And then in the spring, as I mentioned, some project bridge collaborations, member competition, um, and potentially our Hill Day. Again, this is some of the things that happen recurring every year. A lot of them are focused on training, uh, but we're also hoping to have some projects outside of this training. We know that some of you, um, this is not the first year that you're involved, it may be your second year. So we wanna make sure that while this training happens every year, we're also having some little projects that um, you can help lead, you can be involved. And if you have, of course, any ideas or any things that you're really passionate about and you wanna actually um, you know, lead a project, um, please let us know and we're happy to um, you know, work with you on actually making a project outside of these training opportunities. Um, and so I think, um, Desmond, if you wanna take this part. Yes, hey everyone. So later this month, we are collaborating with the PDCO to put on an educational event called the Science Policy Careers in Government, um, which is actually a career panel that is part of the ICANN series. Um, and so this seminar is two hours long. Um, the first hour is the career panel will, where we'll be having Dr. Renita Polk from the California State Assembly, Dr. Kristen Hook from, um, who is a AAAS fellow, um, and she's actually working in Congress currently, and also Dr. Kelly Single, who is working at the NIH. And um, for this panel, they'll be talking about um, their career paths, um, their day to day, um, things that they like about their jobs and things that they find more challenging. 
um, and they'll also have an open Q&A so that they can answer your questions and give you tips about um, the skills you would need versus the skills that you would learn on the job. Um, and then the second half of that seminar is actually a workshop where um, they'll be working with you um, on some writing based activity um, that's still the details of that are still being hammered out but there's that um, and then in November there's another seminar called uh, careers in science journalism and communication um, and we're still also working out the details for that but we'll be having some professionals come in um, in the field that will be talking about journalism and communication as it relates to science so um, keep your eyes peeled for that and yeah, that's that. All right, thank you. As I mentioned, um, right before, we we're hoping to have some seminars on science diplomacy. This is quite a new field that a lot of, um, you know, is still kind of being defined as we, you know, as we go. Uh, but we're hoping to co-host two events in October, later October, about um, first the UN and why is it important um, for scientists to be involved uh, with the UN and kind of the work that you know scientists do there, um, and then secondly, um, we're going to do a second one on how can scientists shape uh, foreign policy, and we're going to have um, the current State Department Science Policy Fellow um, from the American Institute of Physics, um, and so this is going to happen again late October. Um, there is a PDCO event in the seminar series that we mentioned. We're happy to send another email later today with the, the list of events as well uh, that is going to be about science diplomacy and kind of what science diplomacy is. Uh, so it could be a good first event to come and then uh, come to these two co-hosting events um, if this is something that you're interested about. Um, the uh, Penn Science Policy and Diplomacy Group has done a lot of work uh, on science diplomacy, and we're hoping to start our diplomacy work uh, sometime this year. So even though we're starting with the seminars, we're hoping to have uh, some collaborations with um, you know, either the UN or other groups uh, and kind of think about projects that um, you know, many of you can help. Um, you know, and again, it's not just going to be about trainings, but actually about um, also participating in specific projects. Um, uh, as I mentioned before, we're going to have these uh, science communication seminars. So we would like you to think about their, um, you know, how they're going to happen kind of like this, right? Um, some science uh, communication workshops with Project Bridge early in the year, hopefully uh, the NSPN JSPG policy competition in April, and then, you know, with the work that you may be doing for two to three months on these policy memos, we know you're going to have, you know, you're going to be doing all of this work. So we also want you to not just, you know, submit it for publication, but we think this is a great opportunity for us to then go and advocate for, you know, some of these issues that you've been working on for the past two, three, um, months and actually have these memos and bring these memos with you uh, to meet with you know legislators. Again, we don't know how this is going to look like. A lot of these hill days are happening virtually right now, but we're looking for somewhere around April, May um, for this. So who knows what that's going to look like. Um, but, but this is something that we would like to do. Um, so we're working on it um, for early next year. Um, and then Edwin, I don't know if I think you're still here, but if you want to take this part on the one picture initiative, which is still in the works, but quite an exciting project. Yes. So um, this initiative uh, is essentially to get students involved in the uh, advocacy and uh, policy making process. And so um, we, uh, based on what other schools have done in the past, uh, we wanted to um, mimic that. And uh, we reached out to the Office of uh, Government Affairs uh, back in the spring. And so um, essentially they told us that in order for us to get involved and be actively involved in the policymaking process, we would have to dissociate ourselves from 
Hopkins as an entity. And so um, that was something that Bernard and I were uh, thinking about. And so we thought that we would um, do it in a way where the uh, representatives and the delegates would reach out to us for uh, information on different topics. And then we would provide it to them based on um, our members and their interests and uh, areas of expertise. And so um, in October, uh, we will reach out to Beth Resnick. She's the um, Dean of Public Health Practice. And so there's a health policy uh, Institute uh, internship here at Hopkins where they match students with different uh, representatives in the Maryland General Assembly. And so we will circle back with her and uh, decide the best way that we can take this. And so we're ready for the um, uh, legislative session in, uh, in the spring. And also based on today's um, survey on the different topics, uh, we'll make sure to also incorporate that into uh, the find, um, incorporate that in, uh, in our search for different senators and the um, policies that they work on. Yeah. Thank you. And some some background on these two, um, you know, these are two of the science policy groups in Wisconsin, as well as uh, Northwestern and they do a similar stuff in which, you know, they are some kind of science advisory board. So they will have representatives reach out to them and especially with COVID, right? And say, listen, I do not know anything about COVID. Can you give me, you know, just one page on what is COVID? What should I care about? What, you know, what are some of the very important details that I should care about as a legislator? And so this is not for us to provide our, you know, um, you know, influence policy, we're kind of providing our expertise as scientists. So, you know, this is an, a project that's meant to be nonpartisan, uh, but obviously pro-science. Um, and again, we're still trying to work, as Edwin said, the details on how to do this without, um, I guess, pissing off Hopkins. Um, and so, yeah, so hopefully we'll have this a little bit more um, worked out and so we're hoping that you know all of you are experts on the things that you are working on and we're hoping that we can use this expertise to again provide um facts about science that maybe you know um legislators just are not aware of or they lack um some of this uh, i think there was a hand raised so please um if you have any questions yeah hi um... hi <laughs> <laughs> um i i just missed the name of the person you said i i think i i might be confused but there is a program you said at hopkins where this professor matches students to a representative is that, mm -hmm. is that what i heard correctly do you know yes. the program yeah, yeah. we can I, Edwin, if you want to take that <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's the um health policy uh internship and so you apply and they match you based on your experience and your interest. And so it usually opens, the application usually opens um, in the fall and then they match you. So you, it's it's like an internship basically. And then, um, you start in the spring and uh, we were thinking it's, it's kind of competitive um, since the, um, representatives and delegates tend to pick people who have experience and we understand that most of us don't necessarily have that experience um, in that area. And so that's why I wanted to sort of branch out to see if we can still uh, give an opportunity, an opportunity to uh, students and our members who are interested in that um, area. And so uh, her name is Beth uh, Resnick and I'm sure um, in, the, in the fall you will get an email um, they're there asking for applications for an internship. I can put her name in the chat too. Awesome, thank you so much. Just out of curiosity, do you know if international students are eligible since it's American represented? I'm guessing. Any other, any other questions about this? Again, it's something that we're kind of still working so that, you know, um, again, we don't want to represent 
Hopkins uh, at all. This is again, some of the work that we wanna do. Oh, again, any other question? Um, please let me know. <laughs> yeah, can you hear me? Hello? Yes. yes. Hi. I'm wondering if international students are available for those kinds of programs because I mean, I would love to present at the Capitol, but I'm also not a citizen. So I, I'm, I'm wondering if, you know, yeah. with all these activities, we're okay to go. Um, I do not know. One thing I will say also as an international student is that um, most of the, I, I, I'm not aware of the Hopkins one. I know a lot of the state uh, fellowships um, or even the Merzine fellowship that happens at the national, um, um, what is it, um, national academies um, are open to international students as long as you can get like CPT or OPT. Um, so as long as you have, you know, you're an F1 and you have like a work permit after or while you're a student, you should have no problem. I'm not aware of the um, Hopkins one. I would assume yes, as long as you can have the, you know, CPT as a student, um, but we're happy to kind of investigate a little bit more on it. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Um, so yeah, again, we're still kind of working a little bit the details on this. We're hoping that we can get it all wrapped up because the legislative session starts in January, I believe. Um, so we want to be able to, you know, potentially be the source of information for, uh, legislators. Um, and again, in order to not be lobbying, uh, we have to, you know, not actively be providing this information, but have you know these legislators come to us or come to us through the different offices uh, from Hopkins. So um, we're hoping to have a little bit more updates on this in the future. But um, again, we're just hoping that it goes well and we can actually do it. Um, but um, we'll have more updates on this soon. Uh, and then, Randy, I don't know if you want to talk about this. Um, Oh, yeah, so um, you guys have heard but not mentioned at the National Science Policy Network quite a few times. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I just wanted to give a little bit of info into what it is and like how you guys can get signed up to get emails and uh, get the newsletter every month. So um, obviously, I start off like with their mission statement, which is overall connecting early career scientists policy advocates. And so their mission is to catalyze the engagement of early career scientists and engineers in policymaking by fostering community, training the next generation of leaders, and empowering advocates for the role of science in society. And so some of the benefits of um, joining in terms of the membership, it is $20, but I put an asterisk here because they do have a application for the fee waiver. Um, I don't have that link here, but once you go and actually go to the website and sign up, it'll give you the option immediately if you want to sign up for the, for the waiver. Um, and these are just some of the few things that I included with the membership access again to the online community discount rates for the annual science policy symposium access to chapter micro grants the monthly newsletter, as I mentioned. Um, eligibility to apply for the individual professional development grants and then also uh, eligibility eligibility sorry for leadership positions and so okay next slide sorry. <laughs> I think there was a question. Um... Oh sorry. <laughs> Sorry that there isn't, this is just me from last time. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Oh. <laughs> but yes, um, next question. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So I, I just wanted to, to include the upcoming meetings that they have. And it also includes the different committees you guys can join within NSPN. Uh, it is a, quite a few. So I guess I didn't list them on the last slide. But even as you can see here, they have the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee. Um, that's the one I'm actually a part of. Um, you can join the uh, engagement in PC joint committee, which is a public member, sorry, yeah, public engagement and communications team. They have a science diplomacy committee um, and yeah, a few others if you continue to read. So this is just kind of what they have going on this month if you guys are interested and again, uh, joining as a member. So that way you kind of have all the information into how to be, get more involved. And so I did put the link to the website on the right side and it'll take you directly to the events. You can click on different things and you know, obviously explore the website and also get to the membership page to join. Yeah, and again, as I mentioned before, this is just a group of early career scientists. Um, if you are interested in you know, getting to work on projects that maybe aren't happening at Hopkins and are happening between either like, you know, 
northeast, um, you know, south, or you know, there are some, for example, the graduate education committee that works on um, basically policies related to graduate education. Currently, they're working on a handbook on you know ways that students can then use this handbook to advocate for change in their institution. Um, so there is obviously some work that is being done between uh, you know people from different uh, science policy groups around the U.S. And so you know you're looking for a lot of people that are very passionate and um, you know if you have specific interests and you know we know that we provide majorly training and some projects um, but NSTM tends to be very project heavy um, recently they started providing some fellowships as well um, and the science diplomacy committee also has created um, internships in uh, I believe different embassies or since um, diplomacy organizations to work with you know a team of three four people on a sense diplomacy project so you know if you're looking also for for internships or fellowships uh they also offer those um of course they are slightly competitive but um definitely a great opportunity um if you are interested in this you know um in these issues um all right and we wanted to end because we are opening some applications for block editor uh, again, an NSPN engagement year, we know that NSPN is a lot. Um, so kind of having a person that can um, deal with all of that, uh, as well as a science diplomacy chair to kind of help us as well get the science diplomacy work um, done in the group. Again, this is just the starting point, so we don't expect a bunch of projects happening all the time, but kind of setting the work this year and building up um, off of that. Um, there's going to be two weeks in which this uh, application is being open, and I'm going to link now uh, into the chat. And we'll obviously, when we send the email with the recording and the slides, we'll also, you know, we'll, you'll be able to access the form from the slide, but we're happy to always, you know, we'll be sending some emails with reminders. Um, and again, if we ha you have any questions on, um, there should be linked in the form another document on some responsibilities, time, what you can expect. Um, but of course, if you have questions on what it entails to be part of the site board or what are some of the expectations, again, feel free to email us, contact us. We're happy to chat. Um, and and yeah, so I will link this in a second. But I believe that's all we have for today. So we wanted to, again, if there are any questions that you have, any thoughts on the things that we said, projects, um, things that you think you know you may want to work on, or ideas that you have, um, please do so. Um, I will um, stop sharing. I think I stopped sharing. Um, but yes, again, any questions, please um, feel free to unmute yourself and ask. Yeah, I have a quick question. Um, so it seems like this is like the intersection of hard, hard sciences and policy. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm in the full time MPH program, my background is not in the hard sciences or, you know, um, in medicine, uh, but I am interested in human rights from a public health perspective. So I'm curious about what the potential is to do uh, human rights advocacy, like for example, to like abolish immigration detention centers or, you know, just uh, et cetera, uh, whether this would be a space to collaborate with other people who are more like in the hard sciences. Yeah, I, I, I we're obviously open. We did the, you know, all of the work with like voting rights and we did some seminars on like science and democracy and how science can help, um, you know, advance democracy here and abroad. Um, I think we're obviously looking for potentially collaborations with other groups that maybe are more, uh, you know, have worked on this before because I feel like sometimes we don't have the expertise here. And I think in these cases, we're happy to collaborate with other groups and do this. Um, we, Erin wasn't here today, but we are partnering with the Union of Concerned Scientists um, to do some, um, you know, they have this uh, 
advocacy toolkit to kind of provide also some training for everyone on more advocacy work. Um, she's leading that section. Um, so we're hoping to have a little bit of uh, updates on that, but we were hoping to also provide, you know, some kind of tools for advocacy and not just always, you know, there's many ways that you can get engaged. Sometimes the communication, sometimes it's like full on policy. And sometimes, as you said, it's more advocacy. And, and so I think we're obviously open to all of these. And I think um, if this means also collaborating with other groups that maybe work on this full time, we're obviously happy to, to you know, um, collaborate with other groups. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Hi, I was just wondering, um, are there going to be kind of, so there are a lot of different meetings, obviously, you're planning to do. I'm wondering if there's going to be like a monthly town hall type thing like we're doing right now, or is it just, is this just a one time thing? Um, a great question. Um, I think we don't have like a set on like, oh, it's going to happen on the third Wednesday of every month. Um, we obviously want to have these uh general body meetings i think each of them may look slightly different depending on like what we have to say but we're obviously open to have this uh, forum of discussion if we want um obviously there's gonna happen like events that like you're happy to come you not know, go but we won't consider those general body meetings right if we have some sensible missy seminars those are the sensible missy seminars that we're you know co-hosting or we helped organize but to have these kind of catch up monthly kind of events or where we kind of talk about the, the events that are happening in the future. I think we want to have them when there is enough to say, at least um, we don't want to, of course, take um, time of your work if we don't kind of have these events planned. So um, we're happy to have these town halls um, and potentially there be, you know, if we don't have any updates, maybe there is a specific topic that we want people to talk about, right? Um, that may be related to policy or anything that may be happening um, to here or abroad that we think that it's important for us to talk about. So um, I would say, yes, um, we'll have these meetings. We are just not sure if it's gonna happen every month um, because of course we wanna make sure that when you come, we have something to obviously um, show and and you know we've done our work to you know update you on the things that are going on um but yeah again we we're flexible on 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 this so if people say we want to have a meeting now we're happy to have a meeting whenever you know uh, our members think it's um necessary but thank you mm -hmm. any other questions. I know this was a lot of information. Um, so we just wanted to kind of make sure that everyone knew what the group was about, what the work that we, you know, had done in the future. I, in the past, this 2020 was a little weird with events because, every, you know, we had to adapt everything to uh, virtual setting, but also, you know, telling you about some of the projects that, you know, are always kind of recurring, but also projects that we're hoping to to get started. Um, and again, if you have um, anything that you're passionate about, anything that you say, we should do something about this and I have an idea, uh, we're happy to you know, hear it, make it happen, get people from the group to say, okay, you know, have two or three people lead it and then you know, make it a reality. So, um, so yeah, um, again, any other questions? feel free to email us. Um, we're hoping to, you know, um, start email you about the different events that we mentioned are happening in the fall. Again, most of them are going to be more training wise, just because the heavier events take a little bit to plan. Uh, so we're hoping that those will happen more um, early next year in the spring. And, and these are going to be more focused on training, what it means to do work in, you know, a career in policy or, you know, more uh, professional development focused. Um, so um, I'll just stick around in case anyone has any questions. Um, but um, but yeah, thank you all so much for coming. Um, expect an email from us with the YouTube link and the slides and all of the bazillion links that we 
um, shared today. Um, but but yeah, thank you for coming. And again, I'll stay here for a couple of extra minutes in case anyone wants to stick around. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. I was gonna ask you a couple of things, but I can I can email them to you as well. <laughs> you can you can ask me a couple yeah. of things if you want. Yes, I stop recording, but unless they are like important for everyone, they should hear it. Right. <laughs> <laughs>